Hey YouTube, it's Janita from Bless the Press Creations. Um, I'm restarting this video because I already had gotten a good distance in it and my son from Indiana called me. So I had to take that call, but we're going to just start over. I am following a process that I saw on Facebook from a young lady in Crafting Besties. Her name is Lashana Caraway Swan on Facebook. She did a five-part tutorial of how to uh, sublimate a full, do a full sublimation on a shirt. And I uh, followed her process, but created a doormat instead. So I am going to make an attempt to do a short version of her lengthier process with an image that I edited following her uh, steps. And the reason that I shortened it is because, one, I'm not doing a t-shirt and two i don't know silhouette studio as well as perhaps she does or perhaps anybody out there but i learned what i need to know for a particular project that i'm working on so i was able to follow her steps and repeat it while i was on the phone with my son to make sure that it was going to work so i'm going to do that in hopes that um this also helps someone else out there who is starting out in sublimation who's thinking about getting into it and also like me trying to learn Silhouette Studio because um, Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop is not an option. Okay, so I have my camera, my camera van. I'm saying her name, Caraway. I have my um, canvas situated and it is set at the size of the mat with a little bit of bleed room. Um, in her video, she creates a... Um, a shadow, not, it's not really called a shadow, but she creates a bleed area on the t-shirt and uses that full surface to create her image. That process didn't really work with the images that I was using to try to create the mat. And since I have success with creating my puzzles this way, I believe it will also work with just adding the space for the bleed in my original design without the, um, you know, when you use... Um, some templates that give you the bleed space and you drag your edges of your image out to the bleed area and you can kind of differentiate that. I don't got that liberty because I don't have the skill set to create that. But what I do for my puzzles, it always works. So I'm going to assume that it's going to work with this too. So right now I have my canvas set at 25 and a half by 13 and a half. I am going to be creating an image for the mat from wall, from Home Depot that um, we are all using on uh, sublimation groups and sublimation channels. It's the Traffic Master 18 by 30 inch uh, doormat. It has a border. The border is probably about a good two inches wide from the, from the area that we're going to be sublimating to. Actually, it's more like three inches wide. Um, so it's a three inch border all the way around this, the area that we'll be sublimating into. The, the surface that we will sublimate an image on to measures 12 and a half, I want to say, by 24 and a half. Somewhere in those numbers. Oh, oh, okay. My um, sawgrass is telling me that the lowest, the ink is low and it's very expensive. Oh my God. But, um, so back to this, we're going to, um, create the image based on that size. Just, just as a word I mentioned on a previous video, I was successful with converting my Epson, um, Ecotech printer over to sublimation and that ink I have plenty of. So if I end up not being able to use my sawgrass, I can still move around and create things on my Epson by the grace of God that I just converted over on a whim and it works and it works beautiful. Okay, so um, but for today I believe I have enough ink in my sawgrass to be able to print this image. Actually, I already printed this. I am just going through the steps to create, recreate it in, in Silhouette Studio so that I will have a video to go along with the mat when you see me press it out, right? So my mat is set with the bleed room for 25 and a half by 13 and a half. And I am going to import my image right in there. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So I've already um, prepped an image and that's going to be this right here. So I'm going to drag it down the Silhouette Studio and drop it in there. And then I'm going to change the dimensions on there. The width is going to be 25.5 and the height is going to be 13.5. The image is a little bit blurry. That That's okay. It's not um, when it sublimates, it just looks um, much better. Okay, so now I have my image inside of Silhouette Studio and it's matching the size of the canvas that I'm going to, that I have here. Um, now what we're going to do on the next step is... I'm going to create 
boxes the size of the paper that I will be printing the images onto, which is going to be 11 by 17. If you want to see her initial steps, which don't necessarily apply to this, only because I'm not doing a shirt and creating the, the bleed area doesn't work for what I'm doing or how I'm setting it up because my image, she's creating a whole image. My image, I just, I just, I need to do it the way that I know how. And this is what works for me. So I'm going to be proceeding with the steps that she teaches in her video. Okay. So we're going to create um, box a box the size of the paper that we will be using. Mine is going to be 11 by 17. So I'm just going to edit the dimensions of this box. The width is going to be 11 and the height is going to be 17. I already know that I need three sheets of paper because I've already done this. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is go back to my select tool and then I'm going to move this box over the image to capture the first half of it. And just because I um, don't want to waste a whole bunch of paper, I'm going to get as much on this um, particular sheet. Well, you'll see, I'm going to move the papers around so it, it, it goes around about right there. And then what we're going to do with this box, because I don't want this red border on it, I'm going to click on it and then go here for the outline and click for it to be transparent. I will still have these guidelines around it, but I don't want the red to print on there because then if you don't take that border off, it'll print red in your, in your image. So I'm taking it off and making it transparent. Now with this connected to my um, picture, I'm going to uh, go on objects and go to replicate. And then I'm going to say replicate to the right. Now what you, yeah. What did I just do? Back it up. Let me undo that. Okay, hold on. Where's my box? Did I not? Let's put another box there and leave the border on it for a minute. Okay, let's start that over. Let's go back to 11. And I just did this while I was on the phone with my son while he was talking and everything worked out fine, but I did take the border off the box later. Okay, so I got my page size. 11 by 17, I have it on my image, right? And I have this selected. So I'm going to go to objects, replicate. I'm going to go replicate right. And it's going to make another box that's touching the edge of this box. What this does is allows your two pages to be side by side, perfectly butted together so that you don't lose any image and then end up with a white line down in between your, uh, your, and your, on your image, which happens sometimes, um, depending on how you line up your paper, cut, how you cut it and line it up. Okay, now I'm on the second box. I have two boxes, and you see that uh, a good 70, 80 percent of my picture is already captured um, within the box. But I do still need another box for this last part. So once again, I'm going to go to image, replicate, replicate right. And that's given me an opportunity to capture my entire image top to bottom. So just because of, just because of me, I, I'm going to select all three boxes. And then I'm going to shift my boxes over a little bit just to kind of get it centered and even. You don't really need to do that. It's just a matter of me not wanting to have too much overhang. And I was holding down the button so it's moving on its own. But when it stops, I'll shift it back over and then um, we'll proceed with the next step. So I just want to get the boxes sort of even with my images in the middle. Might not be a necessary step, but it is for my OCD behavior. All right. So now that I have all three boxes selected, once again, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to remove the outline from the boxes so that I have it this way. Maybe I don't want to do that just yet because uh, let me just put that red back on there. Leave it like that for right now. So now having this, what I'm going to do is select everything. And then I'm going to duplicate this for as many boxes as I have, as many sheets of paper as I have. So we have three sheets of paper. So we want to make three copies of this. So I'm going to duplicate it three times. But when I make the first duplication, I'm going to immediately move it off so that they're not touching. Okay. So that's there. This box is selected. This group is selected, and then I'm going to duplicate that one so that I have three. And then I'm going to move this one over to this side of the screen. You can um, move your image further out 
with this zoom out button so that you can see it a little better. It, just even if it's that size so that you can see everything that you're doing. Okay, so now I'm going to click off so that everything is what it is. And I'm going to leave my boxes red for right now. Then I'm going to come over to one of the groups. I'm going to highlight one of the boxes. I'm going to select one of the boxes. I'm going to select my image first. Now in Latana's, Lashana's video, she did not have to select her image because she did another step um, to take the picture out and then um, take the background off and yada, yada, yada. But since I have um, my image was already a J, J, um, uh, PNG, I just wanted to see if it would work this way and it did. So I select the image in the background, press shift and select one of the boxes. Okay, and then I go to object, modify, and crop. What that does is cuts it down to just this par portion of the image. Then I'm going to delete these two boxes because we don't need that. You move over to the second, one of the second groups, highlight the picture or select the picture, and then select the middle box. Go up to object, modify, crop, and then you have the middle section. And what we're doing is we're cutting out slices of the image to put together to be able to press it from three different sheets, but then it'll be the width that we have need of. Then we're going to come over to this one, select the last panel. We're going to go and select the last box along with the image, object, modify, crop, and then we have that. And then we're going to get rid of these two boxes. Okay, I'm going to select all three of my images, put them back here on the panel here. I'm going to zoom back in. I don't need it that big. That's perfectly fine. And then I can, you can see that it's going to line up perfectly with my um, background. All right, so once you get this, My Y, I should have looked at that so I didn't cut the Y right there because that looks a little funky. Okay. So what I'm going to do just for all intents and purposes, I'm going to select them all and then I'm going to, no, that was the wrong thing to do. Select them all, and then I want to align at the top. Okay, align them all at the top, and then I want to align them all at the bottom. All right, and that looks like they are there. And now you see that the image fits perfectly there. Now, when I go to print this with my printer, they will print out to three individual um, pages. So what I have to do now is go back to my page setup, change my dimensions of my paper to 11 on the width, no, seven, 11 on the width and 17 on the height. Not 117, 17. Okay, and then um, each page, each panel will fit. Hold up. What I did is I used 13 by 19. Actually, that's what I did. I, I made the template in 11 by 17, but I printed to 13 by 19, and then I used the extra paper, the extra space on the paper to create something else for another project. So this is 13. I just looked behind me at the actual image by 19. That's what I did because the middle panel was not going to work on an 11 by 17. So then I put that on here, lined it up like that. And then this bottom part down here, I have another order that I have to fulfill. So I made the images for the next order, the other order. Um, I prepared those on here. And when I go to the press machine to, to do this, you'll see that it has images that has nothing to do with this, but I, would, but I have to cut it down. So each one of these gets placed on my um, printer template, which I'll go ahead over to the Sawgrass and 
you know, go through the process, make sure my paper is 13 by 19. This is the landscape and say, okay, go to print printer here, virtual. So print manager, check everything out in the print in the preferences landscape and say, okay. And then I'm going to say apply and then go to print and then it'll open up the print manager and, um, it's going to mirror it there. Now, Lashana mirrored her images here on in Silhouette Studios just so she wouldn't forget. Excuse me, but I think she might have been using a, um, uh, she might not be using a, you know, Sawgrass. I don't remember her saying which kind of printer she was using. Um, so now Sawgrass will come up and I'm going to check my ink levels and then go and see within the next couple of days where I'm going to order some more ink from. But I, I've done a lot of prints with what ink was provided in there. With the exception of the fact that my son purchased the um, warranty for this, I would have taken a chance and purchased the um, market ink. But since he spent the money on the warranty, I'm going to tough it out and stick with the sawgrass ink, which is why I said I would go ahead and convert my smaller printer because everything doesn't need to be printed um, in big sheets of paper. Sometimes I do it too. Oh Lord. See, I got that. I have two things on the um, board there. So, you know, anything that's in your uh, canvas is what's going to be set up to print. So let me do that again because I just want to show you the next step when you get to that part. Anything that is on or touching your canvas is going to show up in your print profile. So you want to make sure you only have what you want to be printed at that particular time on your canvas. I guess with anything, it's a good idea not to wait to the last minute to purchase any replacement ink. But like I said, my other printer, most things, if I have to do it this way, I'll do it this way. Um, until I get ink shipped to me for the sawgrass. And he bought this for me back in October. And we're at December now. It's telling me that I need ink. I think it only ends up being turned off once or twice. Once someone came in my room and turned off my main uh, power box. And so the printer was off maybe a couple of hours before I realized it. And then another time I had to turn the printer off to get it back online because it wasn't talking to one of my printers. Um, other than that, I have not had it where, you know, because every time it turn it off, it recycles a whole bunch of ink. Now, something is askew here because layout, let's see. Okay. 13 by 9. I'm not sure why it's Doing that material mirror. Let's see, don't mirror. No, 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 no. Let's cancel because something is not coming out right here. Okay, let me look over here again and see if I have everything set up right. Oh, I got it. Nope, orientation is that. Uh, why it's doing this? Oh, right here I have it on landscape. There you go. So you have to make sure that, and I came here and looked here, right, and did not take my time and look, but you have to make sure your orientation is correct. So this is why I have my machine set to show me the print before it prints because I've printed things wrong for this very reason. So what you have over here on your page setup, you do need to go through your printer page setup prompts to make sure everything is right. I did that, but I was talking and didn't even notice that I had it on uh, landscape instead of portrait. All right, so now we go back here. The preferences does say portrait, and it probably said landscape here before. So we want portrait, 300 DPI, 13 by 19. Then we're going to click OK. We're going to click Apply, then click Print, and now it should be in the right direction. All right, so while that's going, hopefully this video helps someone out um, in some way, shape, form, or fashion. But like I said at the onset of the video, please go to Facebook if you are on Facebook to Crafting Besties. Ask to join the group. 
I'm not sure if you can see the video without being a member or being friends with Lashana Caraway on Facebook in some way, shape, form. Um, but she's Lashana Caraway Swan. I'll put her information down below. Also, Angelo Bonaparte, Bonaparte from um, Sublimation Cove. They both have full t-shirt sublimation uh, videos out there that you can follow the steps to be able to do this. And I, I'm so grateful that I came across her video because... I, I probably would have evolved myself to doing what Angelo did. I've already watched this video, but I did not try to do anything with it because I have had a lot going on. And so I just haven't watched a lot of videos, but here it is. So what you're going to do at this particular point, it's communicating with my printer to print through the bypass tray, which on the sawgrass, that's where you print your larger prints from. I am using Textar print paper and you need to use Unicell products because it, it doesn't fit the uh, criteria for any of these other products. So on Unicell products, I'm using high quality. I have it mirrored and it is on the correct orientation with the correct page. So what you would do is click print. I'm not going to do it because as I stated, I already printed this. I just wanted to do a video to go along with it. So when I go back there to sublimate the row, you will have a video to go with it. You will click print. Once it start to print that, you'll move um, one of your other images onto the canvas and then you will, uh, let me just hit cancel. So once that print, I move that one out, put the next one on and do the same. Um, I wouldn't suggest, now these pieces can fit with 11 by 17 paper, but um, I wouldn't suggest to change it. I mean, I guess you could if you really had to, but um just move them to your your canvas and then press print for each one. You'll have all three of your sheets print out. Um, so I'm going to move on to the back where my heat press machine is and then continue the uh, video on that side. Again, I hope this has helped someone that's thinking about getting into sublimation or wanting to know how to properly set up the um, image for doing a um, larger than the mat, larger than the paper that you have to be able to print and now you just have to cut the paper down and um, take them together and it'll be able to fit on the map the way that you have need of it doing okay thanks so much for watching and have a great day see you on the other side